Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again, and it's been a little while since we've talked about the Raspberry Pi Zero or the Raspberry Pi Zero W, but today we're going to be taking a look at an all new case. And in my opinion, this could very well be the best case for the Raspberry Pi Zero, but unfortunately it was released kind of late in the Zero's lifespan. Now, if you're a regular viewer of my channel, you know I'm a big fan of the Flirt cases for the Raspberry Pi from the Raspberry Pi 2 all the way up to the Raspberry Pi 4. But recently, Flirt has released a version for the Raspberry Pi Zero. It also works with the Zero W, which I'm going to be testing in this video. This case is coming in at $12, and in my experience, this is $2 more expensive than the board itself. But if you're still using that Raspberry Pi Zero and you've been looking for a good case, this might be a great option. This also comes with a lanyard attached, so you could go ahead and throw it on your key ring, and that's exactly what I'm going to be doing, so I have a mini PC on me at all times. It offers passive cooling for the Raspberry Pi. The case itself is made out of aluminum, and it makes contact with the CPU. Plus, we do have access to our camera port and GPIO pins. It comes with two top plates here, one that covers the GPIO, and the other one has a little cutout so we can access this at any time. And I thought that was a nice little touch because on the full size flirt cases, we don't have really great access to the GPIO. You can always use a ribbon cable, but here all you'll need to do is throw on that top plate with the cutout and you'll have full access. So as you can see, it's very reminiscent of the full size flirt cases. It's just in a smaller form factor for the Raspberry Pi Zero or the Zero W. So let's go ahead and get this assembled. Obviously, you're going to need a micro SD card flash with the operating system that'll work on the Raspberry Pi Zero. I'm using noobs here on a 16 gigabyte card. There is no access to the SD when this is fully assembled. It comes with all the hardware we need to mount this and the thermal pad for the CPU. And like I said, we can access the SD card externally, so make sure you place it in before you assemble everything. Next up, I'm going to grab the thermal pad that's included with the Flirt case. I'm going to place it right on the Raspberry Pi Zero CPU and I'm just going to slide the Raspberry Pi Zero right inside of the case. Now I'm going to throw the bottom plate on. This actually only goes on one way. Just make sure all four holes are lined up. This is going to hold the bottom plate on and the four screws are going to go through the mounting holes on the Raspberry Pi Zero to hold everything inside of the case nice and snug. So we have the bottom plate on, now it's time to choose our top plate. Everything lines up really nicely here. And if you did want to install a camera with this, we do have access for a ribbon cable, but you'll need to install it while you're putting the Pi inside of the case. For the top plate, I'm going to go with the fully covered plate. And that's basically it. We now have a Raspberry Pi Zero inside of the new Flirt case. We have that lanyard, so you could throw this on a set of keys if you want to, and I think that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. So yeah, I think it's a nice sleek little design. We have access to our dual micro USB ports, our mini HDMI, and if you wanted to add that camera, there is a cutout for a ribbon. So the case looks nice. I'm going to go ahead and plug everything in. I've got my HDMI. I'm just going to connect a wireless keyboard and mouse using a micro USB adapter to full size. That's going to go into one of the micro USB ports and finally power. And I'm just using a little battery pack here to power the Raspberry Pi Zero inside of the new Flirt case. And after a little bit of time, we're finally booted up here with Raspberry Pi OS. Now, if you remember correctly, the Raspberry Pi Zero has a single core CPU running at 1 GHz with 512 MB of RAM. And in 2020, I personally wouldn't recommend running out and buying a Raspberry Pi Zero to use it with a desktop operating system or use it as a desktop PC because it is pretty underpowered. But when it really comes down to it, I mean, you could use it for email checking and light document editing. Overall, it's definitely going to be much slower than a Raspberry Pi 4, and that's the board I would definitely recommend getting in 2020 if you're looking for a single board computer to run a desktop top operating system, just pick up a Pi 4. But if you already have a Raspberry Pi Zero or Zero W laying around that you've been using with basically any operating system, even a Retro Pi, the Flirt case will work with it, and I think it's a great addition to this little board. It'll keep it protected, it'll keep it cool, and you could even throw this thing on your backpack or your keychain and just keep a little desktop or an emulation setup with you at all times. Now, I'm not even going to do any thermal testing with this case because I'm 100% sure that this Flirt case will keep your Raspberry Pi Zero or Zero W under that thermal throttle limit. 
Even with a cheaper aluminum heatsink, it works out fine with no active cooling, and this has a lot more surface area than those little 20mm by 20mm heatsinks, and those will keep your Pi Zero cool enough, even overclocked to 1.1 GHz. This video was really just about getting the word out there that this is available. If you're interested in picking one up, I'll leave a link in the description. Unfortunately, this was released a little late in the Raspberry Pi Zero life cycle, but I'm still glad to see it come to the market because there still are people out there that are using the Zero for different applications, and this is just something else we can add to it. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. Just wanted to give you a quick look at this new flirt case for the Pi Zero. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.